look familiar, Chief. We haven't met before, have we? Oh, yeah, back in Santa Monica, right? Whew, I don't know what came over me back there, but now I got this sweet night shift position, and I'm happier than the time I met Superwoods. Ah, well, uh, enough about my lucky break. You, uh, here to see one of the big wigs, Chief? Would that be Sebastian LaCroix of the LaCroix Foundation, or Dwayne LaCroix of Insurrection Baby Formula Company? Uh, okay then. Mr. LaCroix, he told me to expect someone fitting your description sometime tonight. You go right on up. Yeah, uh, you have a good power meeting, or, uh, whatever it is you types do up there. You need any security? Well, you just ring the front desk and ask for Officer Chunk. That's me, in case you were wondering. Ah, yeah, I, I get that all the time. The name goes back to my football days. Oh, actually, uh, my fantasy football days uh, at the station. Stationarium. That was this office supply outlet mall I used to watch. Hey, you kids! No skating in the parking lot! <laughs> that was me. There you are. I was informed of your presence in the building. Since you're here, I'll take the liberty of assuming you've destroyed the warehouse. This is correct, yes? Most excellent. I had no doubt you'd prove my decision a prudent one. I trust you encountered no impediments to your progress on account of my personnel. That is the answer I like to hear. You've done well, circumstances being what they were. I will admit, not many in your position would have overcome such a trial. But don't misunderstand me. It was no fool's errand. You may yet prove to be a genuine asset. It's a bit disturbing the lack of talent within this organization as of late. Tell me, what would you say to doing a bit of reconnaissance for me? Don't be so hasty to inflate your own worth. You've succeeded once, very admirable. But in the grand scheme of it all, an infant's stride of progress. If you're looking to make a name for yourself, listen very carefully. There have been whispers, rumors spreading around the kindred community concerning the Elizabeth Dane, the cargo ship that was towed into port recently. Have you heard of it? The Dane was found out at sea. The reports say it was without crew, but they have yet to report a fate of said crew. The police are investigating the Dane as we speak. Even the Nosferatu have little information on what's been found. However, the reason the ship has caused such speculation is because it was transporting an object called the Ankaran Sarcophagus. Now, I'm not one to predicate a decision based on conjecture, so what I need is fact. And more importantly, I need evidence that the occurrences on the Dane were not supernatural in nature, and in no way relate to this Ankaran sarcophagus. You have three objectives. One, I want you to examine the sarcophagus for anything unusual. You may sense something peculiar about the sarcophagus. In fact, many kindred in the city have reported an uneasiness in the air since the Dane's arrival. Do not, under any circumstances, open the Ankaran sarcophagus. Secondly, the police have begun their investigation. Find out what they have concluded thus far. Thirdly, take the cargo manifest for the ship. I want to find out what else it was carrying. The last thing we want is police aware of our existence, so be careful what you do in front of them. And unlike the warehouse, you cannot wholesale slaughter a ship full of lawmen without consequences. Is this understood? Good. Oh, and it has come to my attention that you had an encounter with Nines Rodriguez earlier. 
The man so does love to throw that cretinous charm of his brashly about. What exactly did Mr. Rodriguez say? I see. Then, you should go humor the by-the-numbers rhetoric he's so desperately aching to spew. Oh, please, before the chance of fascist oppressor from that dive of theirs clog the air and choke the local kine. Give the Anarch community my regards. Player, what's the score? How they hang? Good evening and all that commotion. Welcome to Fat Larry's Trucker Mac, the only store for all your needs after 10 o'clock. I am the proprietor and salesman of the month several years in a row. The ladies call me, oh God, but you can call me Fat Larry with a F-A-T. Because I know I got a weight problem, I just don't give a fuck. That is a legitimate question, but a better question to be, what don't I got in this truck? Because at Fat Larry's, my motto is, everything's got a price, but I probably know somebody who can get it anyway. Nah, now that's what I like to hear. But it's like this. I say my best stuff for select clientele. Now that don't mean I don't appreciate your business. It's just, you know, business. Yo, 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 I got dinosaur egg. Check it out, check it out. Step right up. Hey, hey, don't walk on by. I look like T.I. Warwick. Check it out, check it out, step right up. Check it out, check it out, step right up. Hey, hey, don't walk on by, I look like D.I. Warwick. Yo, man, I got a Galapagos turtle. This week... Oh. Check it out, check it out, step right up. Say now, brother. See. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, that's your business, okay? Yo, I need a hardcore, massively bionic, two fisted yo Jimbo for a supersized skull. Straight up, hundred million dollar movie gangster. You still with me? Here's what's going down. I got a tip that the Chinatown Tong and some local boys are meet down at the nearby parking garage to carry out a business deal. Now, I can't tell you what they is exchanging, but let's just say a certain client of mine is ready to drop some Uncle Sam-sized bucks to acquire what's in briefcase number one. You get it for me. I'ma not only give you a cut, 
but I roll out my special stock as well. Now, how that sound? Yeah, that's what I like to hear. Now, if you're the straight-out hard-boiled Terminator type, I'd suggest you buy some heavy firepower before you roll up to the parking garage. You need anything? Yo, 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 I got dinosaur eggs. We don't know what kind. Buy them and hatch them. Yo, man, got a Galapagos turtle this week only. I don't want to talk to you. Move. Mr. Milton, you know who this is, and I do hope you realize that we're still on for tonight. Meet me at the agreed-upon location across from the bar by the underpass. Bring your associate, Mr. Durbin, as it is a two-man job that I am proposing. With any luck, the two of you are already on your way, and I shall see you soon. Goodbye.
Lucky who made it back in one piece. How in Santa Monica, kiddo? <laughs> I can't imagine you did. Probably too busy getting pushed around by every vampire with a week of seniority over you, am I right? story goes. Same old bullshit politics from when you were alive, huh? Don't it make you just want to rip somebody's spine out? What? You saying that's just me? <laughs> politics. The stuff that makes the rich get richer. Keeps the powerful in power. Look at why you're out in Santa Monica in the first place. Because Prince LaCroix said so. <laughs> ah, kid, I never answered a no man in life. Now I sure as shit ain't taking orders from a vampire with a suit and a funny name. And when I die again, the devil's gonna have to cut me a deal if he wants my ass. Besides, I never trust anybody with an ex in their name. Because he never thought you'd make it back. If Nines didn't stand up for you in the courtroom, you would have been toast right there, man. Everybody knows that. Public relations, man. Calculated risk. 
Ventura are born in a poor room. When Nines called him out, LaCroix realized it was time to show a carefully measured dose of Camarilla compassion. LaCroix is the boss of the Camarilla in L.A. That's it. <laughs> LaCroix is the boss. <laughs> That's rich. The free living dead, kiddo. A lot of people like to use the label Anarchs. What the hell that means? Anarchs. Those got a nice kick to it, though, huh? <laughs> That's us, so I'm told. What you want to know? Yeah, I could tell you about the history of the movement about our struggle. <laughs> What's any of that shit mean, anyway? Do we want to sit through history class here? I'm no scholar, kid, but I've been around. Seen more and done more than most vampires ever will. I don't know that our situation's ever gonna be easy, but some things you gotta decide are worth fighting for. Fight harder than the other son of a bitch. Every time I yank a jawbone from a skull and ram it in an eye socket, I know I'm building a better future. <laughs> you bet, kid. As much as anyone is. Nines is a stand-up guy. Takes the politics a little too seriously, though. Came up during the Great Depression, so his brain's wired for that shit. Me? <laughs> I never had much patience for negotiations. Everyone can live or burn. It's up to them. Bruja. Most everyone here has Bruja blood. Moving right along. What's on your mind? What about him? Ah, man, we got our own problems. Let the kin sink or swim. Well, if it ain't the talk of the town, host a child for Camarilla Benevolence. What errand does the prince have you running today, boy? Nines is expected. Have some manners and don't wear out your weapon. I'm skeleton. Act up again, and I'll be the one showing your ashes to the door. What's up? There's this girl who's been making a lot of noise lately. It's a real pain in the ass. She's a ghoul of this one Toreador creep who disappeared. Her name is Pat. She hangs out in the clubs downtown. She used to show up around here and act like she was everybody's best friend. It was all fun and games until her vampire sugar daddy stopped calling. Now she can't get her blood fixed and she ain't so fun no more. She's been told he was dead. She don't listen. Just ask again louder. Junkie. It's gonna make a scene and get us all some real heat. Vampire hunters, man. You start doing stupid shit and breaking the masquerade, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Trust me. Hunters are the kind of trouble you don't want. She's crossed the line. Only time that mouth ain't blabbing is when it's sucking vampire blood. She's got to disappear. Do this, and we'll keep it our little secret, you hear? All right, have fun. I'd love to do this one myself, but I know it's silent. Just let me know when it's done. that chase you in here, Cammy?
Her nine saved your ass again. You think LaCroix would have stopped counting as many long enough to get your back, Jack? <laughs> what were you gonna break out, huh? Some Tybo? This ain't paintball with your jerk-off friends on the weekend, Kenny. It's the mean streets. Show some goddamn gratitude! As long as you're a tool for some cape, you don't have to say a word to start pissing me off. Oh, ho, ho. you want to know what my problem is? All right, I'll tell you what my problem is. You ready? You are my goddamn problem. Anyone who would lay it down for some cape in an ivory tower deserves what they get. Oh, that's real. Let me put it in perspective for you. The Camarilla claims every kindred's part of the organization regardless. You do something they don't like, well, you're Camarilla, so you get punished under their laws, like it or not. You need to start listening, or you're gonna wind up just like your sire. I'm Damsel, den mother of these mothers, and one pissed bitch since her ploy ruled in. Hey, Cammy. I don't apologize often, but it's just with all the shit that's been going down lately. And on top of it, this plague bear getting the CDC's attention, maybe I misjudged you, is all I'm saying. A plague bearer's a fool, but doesn't care who they feed them. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. We can't get sick, but the kind can. And kindred that feed on them start spreading disease. And that's what's sick, it's an epidemic. CDC's in town as we speak. Seen old yeller? May sound cruel, but it's necessary. If someone puts together two and two as to the real cause of an outbreak of bloodborne diseases, guess what happens? So the plague bearer's gotta be found and put down. If the Camarilla really gives a damn, they'll help us out. One of our boys' ghouls, his name's Paul, lives nearby in the Skyline Apartments. Been a stranger lately. Looked like death last time he was here. Said he didn't get bit, but maybe you can get more info out of him. Wait, if Paul's not talking, you might want to start questioning the homeless pop. So many have been dying lately that it takes the city a few days to pick up the bodies. Yeah? Jack? Jack's Jack. Kind of a legend amongst Anarchs. There's not an Anarch in the world who wouldn't stand in rock star awe of Jack. Even the Camarilla doesn't mess with him. He's been around a long time. He used to be a pirate, so the rumor goes. Talk to Jack. He's never short on Jack. You showed up. Good. Here's what I gotta tell you. And so you know, I don't lecture, I don't rap, I'm no bureaucrat. I'm just a guy out of nowhere came to be involved in something 500 times bigger than you and me. You've got a right to know the score. The Camarilla, this is the short of it. They operate a lot like a pyramid scheme. There's a bunch of these old timers at the top with God only knows what plots in mind. They lose their power, they die. They sired more to carry out their plans. And looking for a little power, then those kindred sired for their own schemes, and so on and on and on. It hurts my head just thinking about the mess. And it works out to as this. Only a few people at the top have any real power. LaCroix? Shit. LaCroix's just the guy who backstabbed and wheeled and dealed his way into becoming king son of a bitch of all the local Camarilla. Him and any of the traitors that sided with the Cam want power here, they'll get what's due. Them's fighting words, newbie. But you're young and stupid, so I won't make an example out of you. See, the Camarilla claims all of us are members, even if we don't want to be. Which is, of course, the biggest little horseshit a man ever heard. Most people learn the hard way. 
I learned the way of this world during the Depression. A bunch of old rich bastards screwed the country. But did they suffer? No. The little people suffered. You can't trust the people at the top. The world would be a better place without them. All you can do is get a group of people together who aren't assholes. Find a place to put your feet up and make some examples of the quote-unquote elite to keep the rest the hell out. Everyone's an equal here. The same thing this country used to be about. That's what L.A. has been. An anarch free state. The Camarilla was kicked out on their ass a long time ago. We, the Amherst, didn't want to play their politics anymore. Now the Croy and crew pop in like they never left? Uh-uh. No goddamn way. Their laws don't apply to us. No such thing. And again, newbie, don't throw those kind of words around lightly. You're risking a beatdown. I fought to keep L.A. free since I was embraced. A long time later... I'm one of the only ones left that hasn't fitted or switched sides. The most veteran soldier on the battlefield. I got their meeting right here. LaCroix represents everything I hate. The Camarilla, stuck-up aristocrats, rich businessmen, crooked politicians. The only place LaCroix belongs is in an urn. Here's what I tell all the new blood. One, if you get careless, that blood will make you into a monster. If you rampage around here, you get put down. Two, don't kill when you feed. No reason to. In this city, there's lots of ways to slake the beast without leaving a trail of dead. Three, the Camarilla's full of shit. Four, watch your back, always. And lastly, learn how to fight. Because a speech ain't gonna save your ass when you're staring down the barrel of a shotgun. L.A.'s the school of hard knocks, so keep your friends close and your enemies in a barbecue pit. Once you square things with LaCroix, don't give that son of a bitch the time of night. I got my eye on you, kid. <laughs>